Welcome to this lesson on linear equations, solving linear inequations. Inequation? What on earth is an inequation? Oh, it's an equation that's like in, in it, safe, blood, in it, gov. Yes, those days working in London come in handy uh, to try and work out the latest lingo in it. Um, solving a linear inequation. Well, we know what an equation is. I think we've probably dealt with much of that before. So let's come back to the idea of what an equation is. Um, 2x plus 6 equals 10. Uh, okay, that seems like a, a nice enough equation. What does it actually mean? What is an equation? Well, I suppose in its simplest form, it means that this x value here can take one value. It's got one answer. And if we just very quickly roll through the ideas, we get 2x is equal to 10 minus 6. So 2x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 2. Now that was a quick skim through, obviously. But now that value of x is equal to 2. Well, what's an inequation? How does that vary? Can x take more than one value? Well, as it turns out, actually it can. And an equation sounds very much like inequality, and there's no real trick here to the idea that they're related. An inequality is uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to sign. How does that work in an equation? Well, you just replace the equals. The equals becomes one of these signs. So for example, you could write it as 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 10. What does that now mean? Well, if it was equal to, it meant x could only have one value. But in this situation, x can actually have more than one value. So if we were to, for example, to go down and do the same level of working out, we would keep the equal sign as a greater than or equal to sign. And what we'd end up with is our answer of x is greater than or equal to 2. Greater than or equal to 2. So actually that what this now suggests is x has got more than one value that it can be. And if you remember from a previous lesson, this can all be shown on the number line. So we would have our value of 2. 3, 4, 5, 1, 0, and obviously we could continue going on ad nauseum, but we're not going to. And so we've got x is going to be greater than or equal to 2, so we do a circle on 2. We do an arrow pointing sort of greater than, so to the right, but because it's equal to, if you remember, we've got to make sure that the circle is coloured in. Now that's you know limited with regards to what I can do without bells and whistles. And at this moment in time, we'll leave the bells and whistles elsewhere. But yep, we now can see that that can be graphed, and all values where x is greater than or equal to two will satisfy this equation. If I put three in, then what do I get? Well, if we put x equals three in, what do I get? Well, two x becomes six plus six is greater than or equal to ten. Is twelve in fact greater than or equal to ten? Yep, it is. So, happy, and x equals 3 can be a value. But actually, x can be any value. It could also be 3.2 or 3.76487219. Well, you get the idea. So now that we've got the idea of uh, an inequation, just a few examples just to show how we use it. Um, and it very much ties in with what we were doing previously with our equations. Now there is one example later on that, you know, and it's one rule that tricks people mostly with this type of work, but just a nice simple example first, and we've got x plus 3 is less than 4, so you've got x plus 3 is less than 4. Now when I teach uh, in my classroom how to solve these, I say think of this as an equal sign. You don't have to write it as an equal sign, but bearing in mind we've got the whole change the side, change the sign, and kissy kissy, and bunk beds, well, the same idea tends to work. So we have the plus 3 that we actually want on a different side. We want the x on its own. So when we move it, the x stays there. We have less than and the 4 stays there because we don't like Q-jumpers. And that becomes minus 3. And so my answer becomes x is less than 1. There's my answer. If I had to draw that on a number line, there's my number line 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. I'm going to draw a circle at 1 and an arrow pointing that way. Will I fill the arrow in? Nope, because it's not less than or equal to 1. Right? So, nice easy example. 
just using basic algebra. What about my next example? Well, okay, same idea. 4x minus 4 is less than or equal to 2. So 4x minus 4 is less than or equal to 2. So uh, once again, the minus 4 we don't need. We want it over there because those two are kissing. And we'll leave them to do their kissing. And so the 4x stays where it is. The less than or equal to 2 stays where it is. And the minus 4 becomes a plus 4. So we get 4x is less than or equal to 6. And let's put our kissy kissy in. I've missed it in my presentations recently, so we'll make sure it's there. And we remember that the 4 and the times have got to move to the other side because the x is now a loner. They've been through a breakup. That's always very sad. x is less than or equal to 6 divided by 4. Ooh, now 6 divided by 4. Let's just think of this as the fact that 6 divided by 4 can be written as 6 over 4. And I imagine everyone now knows that that can be written as 3 over 2. Uh, would I write it as 1.5? Look, you could do. It very much depends on the question. So x is less than or equal to 3 over 2, or if you want, 1.5. How would I draw that on the number line? Exactly the same as I've done before. There's my number line. Let's put the values on. So there's what? 1.5 says 2, 1, 0, minus 1. Uh, we do a circle between them. We do an arrow because it's less than or equal to, and we would colour in the circle simply because we have it as equal to. And one last example. Yep. Ooh, yuck. Fractions. But hold on. We're not bothered. We know about fractions. But one of the things we're going to do is go back to a previous video and just maybe correct something or, or make sure that we don't get confused. Remember, this minus sign here is critically important. Why? Because it can cause all sorts of issues with this part of my fraction. For completeness, what I should really be doing is putting these in brackets. And so, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to rethink of the question in brackets. So, bracket 4x minus 3 over 2 minus bracket 3x minus 3 over 3 is, e is less than 3. We don't like fractions. We keep saying we don't like fractions. How do we get rid of a divide by 2? Yep, you multiply absolutely everything by 2. With that first fraction, that means that all I get left, and I'm going to leave it in brackets for a bit, is 4x minus 3. What happens up here? Yep, I'm going to multiply all of that by 2, and I'm going to leave it by my bracket for the moment, and just divide by 3. And that's going to be less than or equal to 6. Remember, you are multiplying absolutely everything by 2. So we're halfway there. We've got another fraction we don't like that. Divide by 3. Yuck. Get rid of it. How do we do that? We multiply everything by 3. And so writing it out longhand for the moment, I get 3 lots of 4x minus 3 minus 2 lots of 3x minus 3 is less than 6, 12, 18. Let's just check that. Times it by 3. Yep, that whole fraction is times by 3. That's been times by 3 because the bottom bit's just disappeared. And now we're getting a lot closer to what we actually want. Well, here's my prisoners in prison. There's my prison guard. How do they get out? Well, of course, they have to kiss the prison guard. So 3 times 4x is 12x. 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. Minus 2 times 3x is minus 6x. Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6 is less than 18. Let's collect like terms. I've got 12x minus 6x, which is 6x. And I have minus 9 plus 6, which is minus 3, is less than 18. Uh, once again, we have gooseberry. So I'll get rid of my minus 3, the gooseberry watching, the 6 and the x kissing. And so we have 6x is less than 18 plus 3. 6x is less than 21. Oh, why can't these numbers be nicer? 18 plus 3 is definitely 21. So let's just do a quick subcalculation. 21 divided by 6 is equal to what goes into both of those? 3. 3 goes into 21. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. That's 7 times. And 3 goes into 6 twice. Can we make that any lower? Nope. So there we go. So I can now say that x is less than 7 over 2. Or if we wanted to, 3.5. Now, we haven't actually got to the point where we sort of 
have found anything different between this and uh, work we've done previously with equations. So surely we just carry on and job goes on. And But no, I did say there was one thing that we actually need to know. When multiplying or dividing by a negative number, the direction of the inequality symbol is reversed. Now that's quite important, when multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Um, well, let's actually see that in action so that uh, you've got an example. Now let's turn on my trusty whiteboard. So, 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 4. It seems like a quite an easy and almost trivial example, doesn't it? Um, well, I suppose so. So let's just see what happens when you write it out. So you've got uh, 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 4. Um, well, okay, we've got the x uh, and the kissing with the minus 2, so it's the 3 this time that moves over. And what does that leave us with? Well, we have the minus 2x is less than or equal to 4 uh, minus 3. Remember, it's a plus on this side, so it becomes a minus on that side. So I have minus 2x is less than or equal to 1. Put my kissing back in is minus 2 multiplied by x, or kissy kissy x. And as we've done before, we will circle my minus 2 and move it to the other side. And that's where we stop. We don't actually do anything different, really, because we are still going to divide by negative 2. But the fact I've said the words divide by negative 2 tells me I now have to swap my inequality. Look, how you do it, when you do it, is up to you. But because I am going to divide by minus 2, and I've said that out loud, my inequality literally flips the other way. So the x stays where it is, and I get the 1 staying where it is, but I divide by negative 2. And so my x value becomes greater than or equal to minus a half. And just as an aside, if you have 1 over negative 2, if you remember that minus sign can conventionally be the top or the bottom, and, but I tend to like it at the top, and I like it at four the front it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me if we do it that way it just leads to problems so there you go now that's literally it if you multiply or divide by a negative number you swap your inequality there you have it in equations equations that are now in as in in your head um, hopefully it's made sense have a good evening